welcome everyone to our first meeting of the year. Uh, welcome back to uh, existing members and a uh, uh, good welcome to you, members on the committee. Um, do we have any apologies for absence? No? Okay. Um, I'd just like to invite them to declare any trust um, or, or confer uh, and confer that uh, we can provide. Um, we want to item number two in a minute. Can we agree a minute of the last meeting, which was the third meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so item number three is, is the local welfare assistance scheme. It's the report that was produced off the back of our um, task and finish. So you all had cited that report now. This was presented to Cabinet in, on the 29th of June. And I think the Cabinet went to the as well. Okay? So I, I, as Chair, I'd like to first of all um, comment that there is an excellent cross-party working on, on this um, from a commemoration part. Um, we had one workshop that lasted the full day where we had um, evidence gathering from uh, organisations via the CAB, Energy Project Plus, and World Food Bank. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then obviously, you know, recommendations come up with that evidence. Um, we've had a really positive response from cabinets when, when it was presented, not a good feedback. And it's been perceived as uh, a positive and, and innovative piece of work, so that's absolutely great. And we've agreed to meet in um, um, six months, we're going to meet in six months, the original panel, and review where we are, how much money is left, and the pieces of work, and uh, if any recommendations are starting to take shape and how they're affecting the council. So, um, any members would like to comment or ask any questions on this? I mean, it really, really was not on this committee last year, but it does look a tremendous piece of work. Um, again, not straying into any, any political mode, but I think most people accept that the agenda within the Green speech would, if nothing else, put more strain on you know, people and the welfare reform system and all that. I'm not trying to, to get that. So, my view is that this body should try and keep intact if you want. Like. The second thing that's happened between now and this report is that obviously with unanimous uh, support, the new corporate plan has been adopted and where the corporate plan can be assisted by what this group does and the way forward because I think we all admitted or like the corporate plan was written before the budget was announced. I think everybody accepted the corporate plan would be even more difficult to deliver as a result of what happened in the future, don't get anyone to know to think it's been made easier. Um, so my view is that, you know, a, 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 as a, an assistance to the executive and the council in general, the delivery of the corporate plan, that we should tweak this to, to tune into the corporate plan. As for every, everything we do, really, if we really all believe in the corporate plan, then we should all be doing our bit to, to make it happen. So the slight adjustments and, and you know, seeing where it fits the dovetails into the corporate plan, uh, and the realisation that, that welfare assistance uh, will be around for some period of time. Um, I think it, it, it is a good use of it, but should be continued and tweaked as this. Thanks, Thanks, Chair. I think I'd like to agree on uh, the Um, I think it was a case of uh, 
firefighting almost uh, when, when we met the first time, as in how are we going to cope with this demand and how can we be more smart with the funding we've got. But there's definitely more scope there for troopers to continue. Tom? Chair, just a thought on the time, excuse me, what I was just said, but perhaps then with the uh, future budget options coming in December, any piece of work and anything here has done could be used in the time for the last few years, so I mean, um, consultation, public recommendation, and other students, and other students. Yeah. Anyone else happy with that? Yeah, I can see that. I'd just like to uh, put my thanks on the record from all of us that uh, to Malcolm, who's not here, because yeah, he hasn't. <laughs> Is uh, all the recommendations we've 
uh, both of the tasks we finished group that we, we obviously uh, were assisting on with yourselves and looking at what the options are. Several options ultimately were considered by uh, council as to what would be the appropriate hours. Uh, after some discussion, the 18 hours was the one that was adopted, um, and that has to be balanced as to effectively the uh, income uh, or budget that we had available, uh, and also what was the best way to deal with um, of the major community libraries. I recall one of the other tasks we finished was whether and how we looked at individual sites um, and clearly what you will be aware is that all of our sites are over open on different days on a, about three different patterns. They are all open 18 hours. The belief was that with community libraries that as a start point they should all be the same. We are offering all the same hours as each site. It is then what we are doing individually is we are talking individual areas. There are a number of areas that we got help that's moved in uh, to assist us, there are other areas we're in discussion with, uh, and that is then looking more independent at each site to see what we can do. Uh, certainly it is trying to pick up anything that we picked up from the task and finish group, looking at what we can do, but I have to say that it is within the context of obviously we do have a reduced budget that we had to work to, and we believe that the way that this was set up as the first move towards uh, having to reduce hours was the best way possible that we could do, which is also helped us then engage with more community voluntary uh, volunteers to be able for them to come in and try and support us in our library service. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, Martin, do you envisage then as you continue to engage with, with volunteers and like it, it, it's conceivable that we could actually extend the open hours beyond 18 hours as volunteers are made available and are trained? Came to each other, really, that there are two ways forward. Uh, that yes, they could uh, extend the hours, which is already happening at least at one of our sites where volunteers have come forward. The other option is clearly that they would then be there while we are open, would either support our full time staff or in situ. Um, ultimately, there could be a decision made by us that it would be a volunteer library, but that is not on the table at the moment. I certainly know from the national agenda that that has been seen in a considerable number of areas. We tend to get the emails from different authorities who look at different methods. At the moment, we are working with our volunteers to either be there with us, but mainly in other hours uh, outside of the 18 that we are currently doing as a faculty paid service with our paid staff. There will be other activities going on from unpaid staff in there, but other volunteers are helping to give some sites um, additional hours and clearly one of the issues we have is that might be because there is um, a very vibrant friends group where there are other areas across this borough with the 15 community libraries that do not have as vibrant as a friends group and it is then for us to try and balance what people can do to give extra as well as recognising some of the social demographic issues at some sites that won't have that kind of support. So that is really where I work with our professional library service to see how we can try and do those so that we don't have too much disparity, but we do support local engagement with people who do want to help our libraries. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to draw out some of the information from the statistics that have been provided. Um, firstly, it seems clear that when we had the task and finish group, we had the, the idea was mooted around the group groups that if the hours reduced, people would simply visit the library and reduced hours. Obviously, due to the fall of thirty three percent, that's obviously not the case, and people have numbers of reduced minutes have an impact there. Um, I just want to be clear that that won't then lead to further reductions in hours, because the excuse now is that there's thirty three percent that's used, they could be reduced again in the future. So that's one concern I've got. Um, just a second concern: uh, the graph on three point one two. I'd say it's, it's almost misleading. It, it's basically trying to say that a 33% drop in use would be explained away as an increase from the average over the hours. I mean, obviously, we can average over whatever time scales we like. There's a 33% in uh, reduction. I, I think that's, that, that is a misleading graph 3.2, to be fair. Uh, and finally, uh, when we look at the actual graphs of the decreases that occurred in the central library, that also removes the point that people simply go to the library when these libraries were closed because the central libraries don't seem to have had an increase based on the people not going there. So again, that's an, another idea that was brought out in the task and finished that people would have a wonderful public transport to another library and that the service wouldn't be reduced by this because the water 
be something open nearby. And finally, uh, again, it's an average. Obviously, this is the average picture. It could be that some places are a lot worse off and some places are a lot better off. It may be useful to have the individual libraries details as well as just the aggregates. And there's a lot of questions. Um, I suppose the the last one first, yes, we obviously we do have this broken down to individual libraries, so we can say not everybody is exactly the same uh, on the reductions. So we, can, we do have that, and we do wish that we can give that for the individual libraries. Uh, with regards to uh, the graph, I think really what I was trying to, to get over is that we, we do accept that there has been an overall reduction um, of usage after 15 library sites, which is the first graph. Um, but part of what the proposal was to reduce the hours was that clearly what we hoped that there wouldn't just be the same numbers of people using the 18 hours that we are open, that we're using those when we were open 40 hours. Uh, and I think what we were trying to say is that in part, and I, I would accept as to how successful it's been, is that we have got people who have moved from the other hours that we've now closed, we are now more efficient when we are actually open. Well, we fully accept that there are a huge number of hours. And I think with our other experience in customer services, what we've always found, and I would probably argue this is true in libraries, is that people are very much creatures of habit. They were used to going to the library on Monday, trying to then move them to coming on whichever day we are open, um, isn't just a one week thing. It will take time for us to move, um, to get people to come back to the libraries and increase that usage. Because clearly, whilst I can't guarantee that the 18 hours that is a cabinet decision to be made in the future as to what we do, um, what we need to do as libraries is make sure that what we are doing, we are making sure that our libraries are being used as much as possible before we make any decisions to what goes into the future. So I think it is to show that it is a step in the right direction, that the libraries are now open are being used and those hours more than maybe they were uh, previously. Uh, you mentioned about the central merges going down by 6%. Uh, the thing that I can't actually show to anybody is if we hadn't done the community libraries, would it have gone down by more than 6% because the national trend? Equally, it could be counted that the Met have actually gone down less than 6%. But what we can't do is say, what is that percentage due to? Is it the national agenda that we, we are losing people? Traditionally, is that's now what we are seeing people move away from the libraries. Would that have been 10% or is 6% basically because other people have moved? Clearly, what we also do is we are trying to, to see uh, within much more detailed information are people moving from a community library to the, mer the, the nearest merge or central. And we are trying to see, obviously, again, from the information we have, because when we go and take a book out, uh, we can see where you've previously taken the books out to see what people have moved. Clearly, what I know we haven't seen is a move towards just the big four centrals. Um, people are either moving to somewhere local around um, or a, a more local merge because obviously we have the four centrals. So we are trying to see that and then trying to engage with trying to bring people in. But I will fully accept um, that what we are trying to show is what, what has happened uh, in currently in the first three months. Um, uh, as I said, it's certainly an experience of say for instance one stop shops. Uh, in some years ago when we changed hours, it took some time to get people to come back and ultimately to the new hours because that's what they get used to. I think it would be more reasonable to look after six months as to whether that trend is, which would then be more indicative as to whether people aren't coming back to libraries or they move somewhere else. Thanks, Martin. Um, I think that, that's clearly a, a good point that this needs to be continually monitored uh, by this committee and to see what the Yeah, just on the report itself, I mean, it's very preventive about the numbers, it was written by Jason Sands, which is fine, I understand. But it, it, it does go back to the activity of 3.2, 3.3, 3.3, maybe detail there on what activity passes, what impact that has on well-being, education, you know, the public health agenda last year was on social isolation, have we done any studies on that? You say this is a six month from the instruments from before, but can you tell me what piece of the work is on going? within the department to see the impact this is having on them and specifically those things. What, <coughs> excuse me, what we can do better. I 
and also what I raised at Council the other day was that there's no actual library strategy for I mean, if you don't even mention it in this report that there's a, a culture and leisure strategy out there that's been sent to library uh, friends groups that is for information really for supporting tests to do, but there's absolutely no anything underpinning it whatsoever. There's no no mitigations, there's no how we're going to achieve it, how we're going to consult groups, how we can do things bigger and better. So yes, we have the reduction in hours, but how are we going to move forward, how are we going to make it better, how are we going to make it more inclusive? And as you said yourself, it's more than just issuing books. Again, I fully accept the report was only to cover the actual uh, change in usage uh, that we've seen in the first few months of this. Um, clearly, again, we are working with regards to a library strategy. Um, we already have one in place. We do look as to how that is changing. Uh, our professional librarians, if you read on that, are looking to see how this this actually changes what we do. Again, I would actually accept that uh, with regards to existing activities, our first remit was to try and make as many of them continue within the hours. So as I say, we, I think it's 55 or 62 we've managed to keep so that they are there. But except changing people's hours may mean some people who previously accessed it can't access it. We are trying to see the kind of numbers that these other groups do, because uh, most of these uh, are what other people do on our behalf. We are still trying to maximise uh, reading activities. So for instance, the Czech Children's Summer Reading Challenge still goes on. Uh, a number of our other activities do continue. Uh, it is trying to maximise that first to see that is our first and foremost, keep what we have going as much as possible, then to see what the impact is. Um, I would actually say that I think three months in, to see if there is any significant impacts, I would say we probably need more time to understand that. As on a day to day basis, certainly our librarians at all of those sites do feed back to the senior staff to say what is good or bad that is actually happening on site, to see if there is anything that we can do. As I say, I, I mentioned some of the things where we're working with volunteers already, isn't actually in the report, that was just to give some kind of flavours to, it's not just about numbers, we know we've got to try and work with other volunteers, other kind of groups that we can work with, um, because that is important going forward, that's how many of the library sites are now working, that's to see what happens, um, and clearly, I, I just view that over three months, this is the first snapshot. To then come back over to Cabinet and yourselves, if that is your request, to then see some more details, certainly picking up some of the details you're going to see in the further report down the line as to how that then has impacted uh, both on usage and individual users. And again, we'd be quite happy to bring that back in some more detail. Well, thanks for that. That would be useful. The, as I mentioned previously, this um, I just trust you think it's been called over to operate to library service and service has been circulated. Is that going to feed into this review or is it separate? What consultations are going on with library news groups? Will in fact members be involved? And what's the time scale on that? Um, with regards to the culture review, uh, the libraries are certainly just one element of that culture review. Um, this is focusing on the previous decision that has been made over the last implement to see how it's impacted. And clearly both this and all of our library activities are feeding into any review. Uh, the consultation within that review will be held uh, again with interested parties um, and led from that review. My role in this one is to see what how we built, what does that do, that will be fed into, as I say, the major culture review, which will then be again as part of a member and both with the users uh, with the user consultation, which I understand will be going on in the near future. But clearly we also do that anyway with a number of pages of our uh, friends groups uh, and our user groups. Uh, so we do that on a very much a library focused basis and understanding is the culture one will obviously be wider but does incorporate libraries. Just a comment on that really sure, because it's not um, it's not really but this, this course through you has been sent to friends groups and um, no elected members have been sent to it whatsoever. There's no time scale on there, it's a statement of intent to do it. Some of us can put things in there, but that was sent four weeks ago, no follow up, no elected members have been informed about it, there's no time scales on there. So it's just this junction process that we're always going through. And if it could be managed up and pieces of work done, then it'd be actually it would be better for all concerned. Uh, just to the UK, one of the things we will always do with our libraries 
um, is actually engaged with our friends first because one of the problems with that is when we give it to the friends or we give it to whoever we give it to first. The, certainly the library area work that we've done is to actually get friends' feedback before we come out with something much more formal to say this is what we think. Clearly we, we do value our friends' groups uh, because a number of them are, are very um, uh, supportive of our libraries uh, is to try and get their ideas first before we go out with something a bit more in detail. Uh, before then, it's formalised, and then it's part of why I think we come out to my music. But yeah, I certainly would take in board uh, that we have engaged with, uh, with friends and looking for feedback from them as to what our initial views were to how we can go forward. But certainly, yes, I'll feed that back. Okay, so Steve, Ernest, and
So we have to be, I'm not mentioning them again. <laughs> so I'm not mentioning them again. But you know, we, are, we, are, we are in a competitive, we are competing if you like. If it's about numbers and about producing numbers, if, if that's what we're getting hooked on. So it's quality, quality, and hopefully getting as many, many people in, exposed to all their things. And it's a great way of delivering the council message. So obviously that's what people are going through. We, we, we are it, make, make, making things. The other thing I think the report lacks is we're all very good at shouting down how bad Riddle is. Oh, aren't we all for doing this with the libraries and the others? Tell you what, why, don't, why haven't we gotten this report to comparison with our near neighbours, Chester and Liverpool, in terms of what, we, what we're offering to the public of Riddle with, with the resources we've got? We will come out we'll very, very well actually in comparison to our neighbours. So we're very good at talking ourselves down. And does that reflect on our customers? Do we say, like well, these are, you know, we ourselves, the politicians, talk down the service. It's in crisis, the library. No, we're not. It's in a broad health, comparatively, a very healthy position. So let's not talk it down. Let's be positive about it and make the best of what we've got. That's my contribution, Jim. Thank you, Steve. And it might be that we actually put on the work program and put it around dinner hour and that's what that's I think it's an idea for it. I've got some statistics from all the councils to see how, how, we, how we compare. Chris? Um, yeah, I, um, I don't know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Why, why, I agree with most of the things you just said. It's surprising. Um, I agree with you. I think the libraries are very, very important things. And not just one thing that we brought to the chart to tell me about borrowing books and taking books out and foot for the libraries that I do a search in my library every Tuesday for a couple of hours in the morning uh, over the lunch hour period at least from 11 to 1. And the majority of people I see there taking books out of the kids, the younger children, which, you know, as you said, you quite rightly say, the adults with those families are in various other places we don't care. But what you will get in the library is a lot of children come in and take three, four, five books out and change them regularly. My question, sorry, but my question was about four, two, three, you've got them here. Which is about staff. We talk about, I've heard a lot about friends of libraries and all the rest of it, but, but the staff, I have a bit of a concern with because in Eastern Libraries, a one stop shop, as you know, um, and it's now gone from where you can walk into the library and sit and wait for the moment to see some of the one stop shop. Now you have to make the point. That's not the issue. The issue I have is that the staff that's sitting on the library desk now are not trained in a triage fashion, and they're certainly not the right people to be doing. Asking what the problems are that people want to see the staff in, in the one stop shop for. Um, and they're actually trying to make them appointments. And we get to be like a doctor surgery where they're saying to them, Can you come back next Monday? Can you come back next Thursday? Very difficult when you've got somebody who's taking time off work, they've got a bit of an issue. Um, just to give you an example, I had a guy in on Tuesday who was desperately trying to pay his, his rates, uh, couldn't find out to do it, he was quite elderly. Your office is shut where you pay your rates now, so you can't go in and pay it over the counter. No idea how to use a computer. Nobody in the, in the library is there to help people use computers, only again the library staff. And if a library, uh, what, you, you, you look at two members of staff, if one of them leaves to go and sit on the computers with somebody, you know, it, we need to look at the, the staff inside. And I know there's a big problem with we've got to lose staff and we can't afford, you know, and the rest of it, like you just said, if we're going to go with this plan, I think that the libraries are a bit more than just a library. They really are like a community centre. <coughs> and I know in Eastern, for instance, that, that I see different staff there every Tuesday. Because some people are ill and they have to go there. And one library should, probably shuts down if there's one member of staff ill. That member of staff then goes to Barrington, so the problem is closed. And it's a problem we've got that we really need to address if we're going to go forward and make these places centres where people can see this plan to operate. We want more people to use the internet services. We, we don't have street scene anymore, for instance. You're supposed to do that online, all the rest of those kind of things. It's not good enough to just put two PCs in a library at a desk and say, there you go, help yourself. So we need to address that. And the feedback I get from the, 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 the staff in the library, and that's from different libraries who frequent uh, Eastern Library, is that, that they're not trained for that. It's not their job, really. Um, and a lot of emphasis is put on, on cultivating friends. I would like to see a little bit more done, maybe, with the staff. And I'm sure the staff are asked. They'd have a lot of answers. 
again, some of the things in my library have been stopped. Uh, librarians used to sit and sort of, uh, do reading with the small kids. That's had to stop because the lady who used to do it has had to go and come with another library. It's been cancelled for the day. It's happened so frequently, those things have, have stopped altogether now. So we are losing quite a bit of what our libraries are there for, so they're not just there for taking out books, as I say. But I would like to see a little bit more of a response from what the staff think and a resolution to this idea that, that these staff that sit behind the desks are there to triage the people who go to the one stop shops, give information out about timetables and put everything. I mean, they're like the oracles, these people. They really are good staff, but I'd like to see some answers from them on how they think they can make the situation better. Um, Chair, um, we do talk to the staff, um, and you mentioned about the change to appointments. Mm -hmm. uh, Easter is now an appointments uh, basis. Again, that's a separate thing that we're responsible for to see how that is operating and to see what the problems are. We are trying to do that within a reduced uh, budget that we have available. As you suggested, part of this is to try and get more people accessing computers, uh, doing things online. Uh, part of that is, is the strategy to try and move as many people who can do that. And I think as with regards to customer services, it's always my view that the first period that we're trying to do that in will cause us uh, some issues if people look to try and move towards that, they will find it more difficult. I fully accept what you said as well about the library staff, we have now moved from people being always based in one site. We do not have the staff that available to be able to do that. We do try and move people around. Certainly, as you mentioned as well, when we do have staff uh, numbers down for a reason, we will try and make sure that we don't do the same library. Uh, we do actually have a rotor to ensure that no particular library is more adversely affected by others. We are bringing in uh, a number of our vacancies uh, to try and make sure that we have full staffing within the staff budget that we've got because that will give us more resilience. Uh, and again, I would accept that we have moved people from uh, just pure library work to we do now expect them to be first stage trying to point people in the right direction. Again, that's trying to maximise the use of the site. I think as you mentioned there, that they are more of a community area, more than just a library, certainly in part of that. That's what we are looking at, the people come in, our staff should not be experts. I certainly don't expect them, with my background, say as a benefit from them, use experts, but they will know at least where to point people. Um, they will be able to make appointments um, to say when people come back on certain areas, but we do expect them to be able to point people in a general way, or at least try and get people to use some of our computers. Again, I agree, it's not a case of saying the supercomputers are there use it, that's what we're trying to engage with people to try and be able to be confident in the future to come in and use that. Again, I can't, I can't accept, I, I can't disagree again with the situation there's a lot of people who can't do that and need um, to be able to try and learn that. The issue we see ourselves in as well is that it's not just the council doing this kind of change over. More and more you see people who engage with on a day-to-day -day basis, utilities, uh, are all trying to push us into that and um, in part us trying to do that will help, obviously help more people be able to engage if you like on the online world in the other areas that more and more people are trying to push us to. Um, it is something as a service we are trying to monitor as much as we can do within uh, the budget limitations we have to then see what changes we can make to try and improve but again I can't say that we can just bring more staff into any particular site is trying to make sure that we maximise the numbers as individual sites. We have the same problem as our centrals, which are much bigger, and where people are coming to ask different questions. And it is trying to make sure that we spread uh, effectively our numbers as best we can, uh, and trying to help our staff do what it helps deal with, if you like, the new world of doing more than just the library work. Well, yeah, thanks. Um, just to finish the question, um, in Eastern we used to have a young fellow used to come all over from Liverpool uh, voluntarily mm -hmm. on a Friday. Do you know what I'm talking about? And he used to sit in our computer suite. We've got a great little room in our rooms. And he would sit there all day Friday and help people out. And on a Friday, people would turn up on a Friday because they knew he was there to get some stuff done. So, my, one of my concerns is that we, we, I understand that the cutting of staff and everything else, yeah. uh, the cost of work, will there, but 
But we're often, we're, as a council, we're trying to get people, as you quite rightly say, onto IT systems and off various other things as cost saving exercises. And we're not advertising it very well as a council, I don't think, to the general public, what we're trying to do. But also, if we're going to do that, we've got computer suites, we've got the, the, the kit there, we just don't have the knowledge or the know how or the people to sit there and train them. So, really, we could do with having a IT board or somebody sitting there to do it. Is there any way we could look at, say, maybe going to uh, a college that does an IT sub courses? We used to have Carl at Park. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm saying we used to have well, well, I don't know whether we've got any colleges local that do that kind of thing or, or <laughs> training, which we could have them come into our libraries on a, on a, as part of their course and, and help people out. Digital champions. Yeah. I think we've got some issues with companies as part of the review. Well, it would make sense to me. Just whilst staff staff uh, feedback on you've got here about eight libraries didn't provide any. Um, it was purely when we asked for feedback from staff, and yes, eight sites, and again, to put that in context, that may well be um, certainly only two, two staff at each may not have had any feedback, um, and what we've tried to highlight is whether or not they've answered with something positive, if people have made no comment, those are the eight, um, but certainly again, we do have regular meetings, uh, certainly our senior managers do go out to as many sites as possible. And it's not just about having them feed the formal feedback, certainly the library staff are more than able to comment uh, to our managers when we go out and visit all of our sites. Christina? Uh, first of all, Michael, thank you for this report, because I think it's um, thrown up an awful lot of uh, discussion and questions from all of us which uh, it can only be a good thing. Um, my questions are a lot simpler, I think, than I think. First of all, I agree with Steve and the dinner time. But if you remember when we had the task and finish, we looked at maximising for children and young people because of the homework clubs. So I would ask about dinner times in terms of the central libraries <coughs> and, and try and, and get, if, if, them open if they still close, um, because we wanted to have the extra hours on our 18 hours, which we have got as 22, um, to, to be in that area where we thought that they were used more. Um, but I, I, I would like to know how we could now find out whether that is in fact happening. Because we made an assumption and we really now need some evidence for that assumption or otherwise in order to decide what the plan is going to be for what's going to happen. Then the next thing is on um, the children's specialists. I believe we've got no children's specialist librarians anymore. And I'm just wondering if any of the existing staff are being um, trained and whether we're still continuing all our story times and all the other things that we do. Um, have all the community libraries got friends groups, is the next question. And also, have all the times been, uh, in your opening times, been put on the notice boards for each of the libraries, because that was a problem initially. And also, are all volunteers, um, do they all have their TPSs? I, I only ask this as a volunteer in Mayor Hall, I know we have to have. And I'm just wondering if you're dealing not just with children but with vulnerable people. Do we know the same? Same that we take the example yeah. of the gentleman who went into yeah. Eastern. Because I think as, as more volunteers are taking over, we have to make sure that volunteers do know that there is an expectation.